back here again with a, another Vinyl Finds video. It's been a couple weeks since the last time I've done one of these. Uh, at least uh, two or three weeks, but uh, I'm back. I do have some records to show. I've uh, been busy. Go Honestly, uh, me and my dad, which has been pretty cool, uh, we've been going out to uh, several concerts. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we saw the Smashing Pumpkins. I actually just got the, got the shirt on right here. Uh, and it was just an amazing show. Uh, uh, like the first half was more acoustic and the second half was kind of like electro acoustic but uh awesome show i mean uh billy corgan came on and began the show with uh tonight tonight on the uh, piano but it was uh, definitely cool to hear uh some of the classic smashing pumpkin songs acoustically like uh today and uh disarm and uh, uh 1979 it was cool to hear him play space boy which is like the first time he's played that since like 1994 on any tour uh, just a definitely a cool definitely a cool show and definitely a highlight concert for me to go to but uh speaking of concerts just uh, uh yesterday uh, it was july 1st uh, me my dad my mom and uh, my dad's friend uh all went to uh, i was near dayton ohio for to see blondie uh, my dad's friend's nephew is the uh, guitar player in the band and his name's uh tommy kessler and I do definitely re recommend looking him up. He's just a great guitar player, a uh, really a really great dude. Um, he definitely hooked it up though with some awesome tickets. Uh, even uh, got us like VIP passes, which was really uh, nice of him. Uh, definitely appreciate that. And it was just an awesome show. It was uh, Blondie and Melissa Etheridge. Uh, Blondie played it first, then Melissa Etheridge played. Um, but Blondie is just an absolutely amazing show. Um, I mean, she's just turned 70 uh, on July 1st as well, so, I mean, for her age, she definitely rocks, and, man, uh, Blondie is just a really great band, uh, and speaking of Blondie, which is uh, just a good segue into the uh, first album I'm going to show, because I actually uh, picked up this album probably about two weeks ago, and uh, it's uh, Eat to the Beat, and then I was actually uh, lucky enough to have been able to meet Debbie Harry, and, uh, she actually signed it for me, if you can see that the signature. Uh, definitely happy that she was able to actually sign that for me. Definitely appreciate that. Um, I actually met the drummer, too, and uh, for some reason I didn't have him sign this album, even though he's like right there on the album, but uh, I had him sign my ticket stub in instead. But I was definitely re really psyched to have uh, Debbie Harry sign uh, that album. Definitely really cool. Probably uh, one of my favorite... Uh, albums that I own now just because it's signed by Debbie Harry, but uh, definitely a cool show. And uh, while I was in uh, Dayton, Ohio, uh, my dad's friend who actually drove us, he was uh, nice enough to actually stop at Omega Music. I got the bag here. And uh, I remember uh, probably a couple years ago, I remember uh, Corey uh, talking about Omega Music in one of his videos. And, uh, when I was thinking that we were going to Dayton, Ohio, I was trying to sneak of record stores nearby, and that was the first one that popped in my mind. And uh, I looked it up, and it wasn't too. It was about maybe 20 minutes, maybe less than 20 minutes from the place where the concert was taking place. And uh, he was nice enough to actually uh, let me go to the record shop. He actually took me there, so definitely appreciate that. Definitely something you didn't have to do, but. Uh, definitely a cool record shop. I mean, it's almost overwhelming to go in there and see all the records and knowing that you just have uh, a little bit of time to actually look and browse, but uh, I didn't really see, come across too many things that uh, I just had to have. I mean, I was actually thinking about getting, because I, when I got saw in this glass case, they had a, a sealed UK first pressing of uh, Pearl Jam Vitalogy, but I passed on it. It was like 45 bucks, uh, which isn't really too bad for a sealed copy of that, but I mean, I really don't need any more copies of Vitalogy, but... I did uh, find this album there. It's uh, Flaming Lips, their album that came out in 1990. And uh, it's, a, it's, an, it's an original copy. Uh, it's a, uh, in a priest-driven ambulance is something that's what it's called. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I should probably know that. But uh, definitely an awesome album. I have not been able to listen to this particular copy yet. I haven't had time, but... Uh, hopefully be able to listen to that here soon, but it is on the purple uh, wax, as you can see. Uh, so definitely 
I felt that was a pretty cool find. Um, but definitely a really cool uh, record shop for sure. Uh, was happy I was able to go in and check it out. And uh, if I'm ever in the Dayton, Ohio area again, I hopefully will be able to check it out again. But uh, definitely, definitely a cool shop. Uh, another flea market uh, buy that I found probably about three weeks ago or so at the same place that I actually got the uh, Blondie album at. It's uh, David Bowie Low. I was really happy to be able to find this one uh, for a pretty cheap price because uh, uh, I found it probably about six six or so months ago at Half Price Books and uh, they had $40 on it, uh, which was, was way more than I wanted to pay for it. Uh, but it's a Bowie album that I needed. Uh, it's a really solid album, too. It's got Sound and Vision on it, which is a really solid uh, David Bowie song. But uh, I passed it out of Half Price Books, and I'm glad I did because I ended up finding it for a lot cheaper at the uh, flea market. It's in just a great condition as well. Uh, it's even a Pro Bowl copy. It's, you can see the uh, gold stamp on the back. But, you know, I'm always trying to find David Bowie albums. I just love David Bowie, so I'm always on the lookout for... David Bowie albums that I don't own, but uh, moving along, uh, Vinyl Rescue Project, a uh, record store that I obviously frequently, uh, frequent a lot, uh, he was having some sell, uh, I think about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, uh, but it was like 20% off or 25% off, something like that, I can't exactly remember, but there's an album in there that I've been kind of wanting to get for a while, it's Allison in Chains, uh, MTV Unplugged. Uh, music on vinyl uh, with the uh, discounted price it ended up not being too bad uh, so and these music on vinyl pressings uh, sound they sound really good uh, all the ones that I have sound really good which I think I this is like the third one I have I have a, a Temple of the Dog one and I have a David Bowie Earthling one as well on uh, music on vinyl and they all sound really good though uh, I means like if you can't find the original this is definitely the next best thing and sometimes probably the best thing. But obviously a really uh, solid uh, album by uh, Alice in the Chains. And that's the uh, one one of the last uh, shows that Lane Staley even uh, was on and part of with Alice in the Chains. But I did find a couple of albums at uh, Half Price Books, which is like the first time in a while that I've honestly found anything really nor noteworthy at Half Price Books. But... Uh, there was a couple albums I did pick up. The first one being uh, the Cult Electric. Uh, the Cult's a, I feel like a really good band. Uh, always trying to find some of their stuff, and this is actually the first Cult album on vinyl that I've actually came across. I have a couple of their stuff on uh, cassette, but uh, not on vinyl. It is a great gatefold album. Just in a really good shape. It has the uh, original sleeve with it. And is on the uh, Sire uh, label. And then I also did find a couple of uh, Cure albums at uh, Half Price Books as well, and uh, definitely. I've always been trying to find Cure albums on vinyl, and it seems like I, it's, you never find them anywhere, at least uh, here in Indiana. And these are the first two that I've actually ever came across. And it's, uh, the first one is a Cure, uh, Standing on the Beach, and it's just a singles compilation. It came out in 1986. Uh, There's a lot of really good uh, songs on here, uh, obviously, but uh, it is a... Uh, got a pretty cool gatefold just shows like a bunch of the album covers that these songs are off of um it said like psh, looks like it's on this thing never been played uh it's on the electro label the black one and then i did also find a uh cure uh just studio album which is uh, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. Uh, it was just a really solid Cure album, honestly. It's just a really good album, and uh, I was really happy to be able to find this one. This one came out in, uh, I want to say 1987. But it's just the Cure is just a great band. Uh, it's a really good album. 
And uh, the last album I found at Half Price Books is a uh, Pearl Jam Backspacer, uh, a Pearl Jam album I didn't have. Uh, and one that, I mean, it's not too hard to find, it's not too difficult to find. It just came out in 2009. And uh, just one that I never really wanted to pay full price for. There are some really good songs on this album, but uh, just one that I just not want to pay $25, $30 for. But uh, definitely happy to find a really good used copy at Half Price Books. And uh, i got one more album to show. And uh, this is the one that I actually won off of uh, eBay probably about two weeks ago and uh i mean i felt like i won it for a really good price it's probably about about half the price that it goes for in uh, disc cogs and it's the uh, last album i needed the last studio album i needed from nirvana there's obviously a couple more albums that i would like to have but uh this one is bleach their first album this is a, a third pressing of bleach the one that came out in 1982 and i know they had uh several different colored uh, releases of Bleach that came out in 1982. This one in particular is like the clear, transparent, uh, pink, purple, uh, whatever color that is. I'd, I'd call it more of a pink, but it's just in great shape. Uh, not really any skips or pops or anything. It sounds like it's barely ever been played. It looks like it's barely ever been played. Um, just, a, just a really cool album. Uh, it's one that I definitely needed and, well, wanted. <laughs> but, uh, Definitely just about done pretty much with all the Nirvana albums that I want. There's maybe one or two more albums that uh, I would like to have, but uh, maybe I'll come across them in the future. But uh, that's pretty much all the albums I have to, to show. Uh, so uh, hopefully I can have another video up uh, short in a shorter time than three weeks. But uh, anyway... Uh, me and my dad are going to the Rolling Stones on Saturday, uh, July 4th. Definitely uh, can't wait for that one. I'm sure this could be a massive crowd, though. Probably like 200,000 people or something crazy, I think is what they said is going to be there. And although I'm not really too happy with the uh, opening act, for some reason uh, Rascal Flats is the opening act, and I'm not a big Rascal Flats fan, but I'm there to see the Rolling Stones, so that's all that matters. But uh, my camera's about to die, so I guess that uh, means I'm out of time. And so, uh, anyway, thanks again, guys, for watching. Definitely give all those albums two thumbs up for sure. Uh, thanks again, guys. For